Formula One Chief Technical Officer Pat Simmons recently suggested in an interview with Auto Motor and Sport that next year's all-new Formula One cars might start the season just half a second slower than the current machines. That led to some raised eyebrows given the expectation has long been that the 2022 cars would be by their very nature a good chunk slower than the current machines. So why does Simmons, a man not prone to hyperbole, believe that the cars built to next year's dramatically different technical regulations will prove to be quicker than everybody expected? Let us know in the comments how fast you expect the 2022 cars to be, and if you think it matters that next year's cars might be a little slower. While it's correct to say that the current generation of Formula 1 cars are the quickest in Grand Prix history, it's not quite accurate to say that about this year specifically. The rule set that F1 currently runs to is essentially the one introduced in 2017. The aim of those regulations was to improve lap times by 5 to 6 seconds compared to the 2015 cars, a target that was hit superbly given the average improvement of pole position times, comparing 2015 to 2017, was almost exactly 5.5 seconds. Sadly, the objective was illogical and did nothing to tackle F1's problems such as the dirty air that cars produce. In fact, they made things worse. The 2017 pace improvement was the result of wider cars with more downforce and wider tyres. While those rules have been tinkered with since, notably with a simplification of the front wings in 2019 and then the triangular cut in the floor and other minor tweaks adopted this year, they have stayed largely the same. But the changes for this year have cost the car's performance. If we disregard the circuits where direct comparisons aren't possible for 2020 to 21 because F1 didn't visit them in both seasons or thanks to circuit configuration changes or rain, that leaves eight tracks where F1 cars were, on average, 1.208 seconds quicker last year than this year. We're not going to get into the reasons for that loss of pace right now, other than to say that it is conclusively a consequence of the small but significant aero tweaks made for this season. These have impacted everyone, not just Mercedes and Aston Martin, who have been the worst affected. We'll get onto why the cars are expected to be slightly slower in a moment, but first, thanks for making it this far. It's only possible for the race to produce videos like this one thanks to your support. Many of you watching will already have done so and we thank you for it, but to support our channel, those who haven't, make sure you hit subscribe and also join the notifications bell so you're alerted the moment there's something new to watch. And I promise you, we've got lots of exciting stuff in the pipeline. Let's go back to the day the 2022 regulations were revealed at the 2019 United States Grand Prix. Of course, this was when the new technical regulations were expected to come in for 2021, before they were put back a year thanks to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. A target pace was not a priority for this rule set. Instead, the focus was on improving what F1 head honcho Ross Braun called the raceability of the cars, primarily through aerodynamic changes alongside other important objectives such as cost control. During that press conference, the FIA head of single-seater technical matters, Nicholas Tombasis, suggested that the cars built to new rules would be between three and three and a half seconds slower per lap. That year, there were plenty of predictions about how quick the cars would be, but none as bold as the recent suggestion by Simmons that the time loss would be only half a second. There were even suggestions the lap times might rise by as much as 7 or 8 seconds. There are good reasons why the rules should increase lap times. Firstly, the 2022 regulations hugely simplify the top body aerodynamics. That means less downforce from the tightly regulated front and rear wings, which are tightly prescribed in order to eliminate the outwash aerodynamics that have made F1's turbulence problems worse over the past dozen years. It's all about both cleaning up the wake and getting it out of the way of a following car. Not only does this mean the potential for generating downforce is reduced, but it also makes it harder to create the complex, high-energy vortices that have been used to seal the underfloor with what can be thought of as virtual skirts. 
the famous Y250 vortices, created at the transition from the FIA mandated flat central section of the front wing to the freer outboard end, which is 250mm either side of the centre line of the car, so you see where the 250 comes from, will be no more. While the complex barge boards that were key to controlling the airflow down the side of the car are eliminated. Secondly, the weight of the cars has increased. In fact, this has actually got worse since Tom Bassis made his prediction, given that the original 23 kilo weight rise has been increased by a further 17 kilos, partly for safety reasons. This means that the cars will weigh 792 kilos, including driver and equipment, but not including fuel, at the start of 2022. And even then, some could face a battle to get down to the weight limit. Thirdly, while the power unit regulations are effectively the same next season, there is a change in the fuel. This must now comprise 10% what is called advanced sustainable ethanol, that's E10 to you and me. The fuel companies are still developing their formulations, but when you ask around the F1 paddock, most say that's leading to a loss of around 20 brake horsepower. It's a straightforward enough question, simplified cars with less aerodynamic performance potential that are also slightly heavier and with slightly less power equals a drop off in pace, right? Well, maybe not. While the top body downforce generation tools are limited, genuine ground effect Venturi tunnels down each side of the car return for the first time since they were outlawed at the end of 1982. Now, ground effect has never really gone away in F1. After all, that's what maximising the low pressure area in the underfloor is all about. But these powerful tunnels have been missing for four decades. The hope is that they will be a more robust way of generating downforce, thus improving the raceability. Based on simulations conducted by the teams, including those using the driver in loop simulators that the current drivers have been able to have a drive in, this appears to be leading to impressive downforce figures. Potentially this could mean prodigious corner speeds, particularly in the faster stuff where the cars are going quick enough to get the Venturi tunnels working really hard. It's also worth mentioning that the talk among the drivers who have tested the new for 2022 low profile Pirelli tyres to run on the 18 inch wheel rims, 5 inches larger in diameter than today's, is encouraging. Apparently they have achieved their objective of being less temperature sensitive and allowing drivers to push harder, but there is also another benefit. Because they're lower profile tyres with a far shorter sidewall, they load up more quickly on turn-in. This could potentially make the cars more reactive, a rare gain given F1 cars have become lazier or less sharp on track over the past decade despite their prodigious pace. But the most important factor is that while these regulations were the most rigorously researched when they were written, thanks to the combined efforts of the F1 and FIA technical departments under Simmons and Tom Bassis, the collective might of the 10 F1 teams, thousands of engineers with several years to prepare, cannot fail to find ways to develop these cars way beyond what was originally conceived. When F1 revealed its 2022 show car at the British Grand Prix in July, it was best described as a vanilla version of the cars. Those working on the real thing observed it featured far less detail, indicating that while the basic shape was correct, the pucker 2022 cars will look different, especially if you look closely. Doubtless there will be a few surprises when the new cars break cover next February. So who is right? Will the cars be half a second off as Simmons suggests? 3 to 3.5 seconds off as Tom Bassis said two years ago? More than that or somewhere in between? The bottom line is nobody knows for certain, even the teams who are working on the cars and have conducted endless simulations aren't willing to say publicly, but most have found development not levelling off for long in terms of performance gain, so they're finding ways to improve the cars. What history tells us is that even when F1's rules do appear set to slow the cars, either by accident or design, it does not take long for the collective genius of the Grand Prix teams to extract what once seemed impossible speed from them. Next year's cars are going to be seriously quick. And remember, it's not just about where they start, because the rate of development under new rules is always very rapid. Let us know in the comments who you expect to be the winners and losers of the new regulations in 2022, and if you like this look ahead to next year, even if it's impossible to give you a definite answer on just how fast the cars will be, make sure you like and subscribe.